Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are on this planet, and welcome to our City Live. My name is Frank Marchis. I'm a senior researcher at the City Institute. And today, I'm, I have a very special City Live recorded from Dubai. I'm at the Inter International Astronautical Congress. And uh, on the way at the booth here, the exhibit, I met uh, Rachel Boumerha. Hi, Hi, Rachel. How nice are you? Nice meeting you again. Nice meeting you. So, uh, Rachel is, um, works at the MNS... MBRSC. MBR How about Barash and Space Center. Exactly. And uh, you're going to tell us more about that. So, tell us what is uh, this... So, MBRSC. We're uh, in the UAE, first of all. We're a fairly young nation in space. Uh, mm -hmm. Compared to the big names, like in Russia and the US, they're the big names in space. For us, uh, we started with a mission, the Bysat one which is a fairly young mission with 30% contribution of UAE talent uh, in collaboration with the Koreans. And after that, we built the capabilities uh, to Khalifa Sat, which has 100% uh, local capability and built locally in the UAE. As well as other achievements we reached in space, we have our uh, first astronaut into space, and we're launching batch two as well. Okay. What was the name of the first astronaut in space? Hazza Al Mansouri. Okay. So he was there in 2019. I saw him. Yeah, he was in he the was... event. Today I couldn't uh, be able to meet him. I would like to take a picture if that's possible. Definitely so. <laughs> so, um, so the reason I invited you is because uh, you are an executive at the Mars 2117 program. So I would like you to tell us, what is so, this program? It's a great name and a good icebreaker. <laughs> we, we are a 100-year plan. Our leadership announced by the year 2117 that we'll have a settlement on Mars, which people live in there. Uh, our goal is not a 100-year. We're not sure if we live it into 100 years, mm -hmm. but what advancement in technologies we'll have through those 100 years what technology that would be spun off and be used here on terrestrial use. And that advancement is our main goal. Okay. So the goal is to uh, settle human beings on Mars. Uh, but for that, there is a lot of work to do, right? Yeah. There is a lot of technology, of course, uh, development to do. And um, can you tell us some more about those? So the Mars 117 program, we have different initiatives. First of all, we want to encourage the youth. So in education, we reach out to those kids that are aspiring to be an astronaut, aspiring to be an, uh, an engineer, mm -hmm. and give them that capability to know more about space, to share our knowledge to them. And it's always a proud moment when you hear someone goes into a space field because of an achievement uh, such as that. Uh, secondly, we build capabilities for near future missions, something like an analog mission where we know more about the psychiatry of human health and uh, designing a team, designing uh, a mission to go into deeper space for those long missions. Okay. And we're participating here in this booth as Space Ventures program. Space Ventures, we look at uh, startups and encourage that uh, young, young startup companies to do more advancement into space. And we offer them support in different fields such as uh, soft landing and regulatory approvals, as well as uh, engineering solutions and working with them, identifying the project to work with. Okay. So there is an outreach part, but there is a technology, uh, technological engineering part as well. And there is as well kind of creating an ecosystem of companies that will be able to, uh, to help you to achieve this goal of setting, set, uh, settling on Mars, yes. which is very, I mean, ambitious, I will say. That's the reason I invited you, because I love those kind of ambitious projects. So we talk a lot about that, uh, especially at the moment, because we see people uh, launching rockets, billionaires doing this in particular. And people say, why are we wasting so much money in developing technology to go to space when there is so many problems on Earth? So maybe you have a point of view on that. So spin-off technologies that we got with the first space race, we're utilizing, uh, utilizing it up to now. Uh, space is a big hurdle. Uh, if you overcome a big challenge, you can overcome other challenges. 
challenges such as food or water security or energy security that are mandatory on living something somewhere like Mars can be easily spun off and be used here in the region, especially in a desert area, yeah. where these are the same challenges we have. Yeah, because if you have not been to Dubai, I mean, uh, we have a big city here, but around the city, it's kind of desert, deserty. Yeah, uh, it's a desert. It's yeah. a desert, yeah. So the, face, the challenge you are facing right now in the Emirates, uh, in all of them, is the same that you will face on Mars in the future. The production yes. of food, energy, uh, and of course the issue of water That's as well. Right. Those are challenges we need as humanities, we're not just right. So, how come you started working in this project? So, I'm not an engineer myself. I support those engineers in different ways. We help them in designing a mission, we help them in any aspect we can. It's a proud moment when you hear a colleague doing getting a great achievement. Uh, I'm here to support. We are ad more of an admin and uh, project management. So you are you supporting the project, like you are you taking uh, guiding, taking decision probably on the number of companies that join and, and... Yeah, so we look at the companies. We do those benchmark studies. Mm -hmm. Those uh, studies that would take an engineer a while, we help in that. We work together, all hand in hand. To achieve those big goals in space. Right. Where did you go to school? I went here, here to school locally in the UAE as well as the university. Right. Maybe uh, you can tell which kind of school you have here for this kind of stuff. Uh, we have different uh, schools. Now it's a proud moment when you meet a university. They have space field studies or something related to space. Uh, myself, I'm not an engineer in space. I'm more of international affairs uh, that field of studies. I, I, I'm, I'm emphasizing here that it's very important to realize for the young people listening and watching us here that you don't have to be an engineer or a scientist to be part of the space exploration. Space is a big problem. It's an easy. It's not an easy. An easy uh, space exploration is not an easy task. So we need people, all type of people, to do space exploration. Administration is part of it. Accounting is part of it. So you're an example Thank of you. someone involved in space exploration Thank without being an engineer. And I think it's important that the young people realize that. You don't need to be good in math to be part of the space program. Okay? Remember that. Good. Uh, Were you good in math? Uh, good enough. Good enough. Okay. <laughs> so, um, will you go yourself uh, on Mars if you could? It would be an honor to have that title. But I'm not sure if I'd live that long. Plus, uh, those demanding jobs of being an astronaut, you have to be perfectly fit. I'm not sure if I'm perfectly fit. You're perfectly fit, come on. <laughs> <laughs> we are perfectly fit, right? So you are, but, um, so now, if they, someone who is watching us who is 10 years old, could be part of this program in the future, Hopefully right? so. We build, design, and look at how to incorporate more people into it. And many around the world are uh, doing the same. So we all complement that new space race to reach a different space. All okay. right. Well, thank you very much, Rachel. Thank you very much. It was nice having you uh, today in our SETI Life. So I remind you, SETI Life is a product of the SETI Institute, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Uh, we are a non-profit organization. You can follow us on SETI.org or click on any of the links you will see at the bottom of this video. Um, I'm here live at the uh, exhibition center of uh, the International Astronautical Congress in Dubai, in the Emirates. Uh, so the sun is not maybe perfect, and I'm very sorry for that. You can hear a lot of background, but that's an, an amazing sh uh, uh, congress. I'm, a, I'm just telling you, I've seen so many new things here, uh, new space agencies, a new crazy project, new ambitious views of space exploration and um, it's been great uh, being here and discovering Dubai. Please so, enjoy the show and share as much knowledge as possible with others. That's the goal of such uh, an event and meeting the people that you want to meet regularly. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's nice being able to, to travel again, I would say. Thank you very much. Uh, say something in Arabic for viewers, please. Goodbye or... Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care.